I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here at one of my favourite places. Yes, it's the Caterpillar facility in Desford. And I'm here today to look at the new compact wheel loader range and talk to some of the product experts and see this range in action. Tell me about the product and what's changed and in particularly the markets that are now able to really utilise this machine. I mean, all good things come in threes, right? So <laughs> 906, 907, 908, they've been around for a while, but we've had to update that platform to meet a whole range of new requirements from the market. Because traditionally, bucket and fork, that's all they did. And anymore, they want hydraulics, customers want to do much more on the front end. So onset of next generation comes a whole hoist of new toys for the operators to use. Now talking about threes, the big areas that we did on this machine in terms of updating is of course the most visual is that operator station cab that you just sat in. Yep. So it's very much looking like our small loader cab, which was an absolute benchmark for the industry. So a lot of the commonality is now finding its way down onto the small platform. Great. Under the hood, we've got a brand new powertrain, we've got a new engine just built up the road in Peterborough. It's our new C2.8 engine there, so that gives a lot more power out the unit, a lot more torque as well. Uh, it goes up to 40k or 25 miles per hour now versus the slower version on the M series. And on the front end, we've recut the metal, stuck in some extra hydraulics, so we can do a lot more stuff on the front end, serving industries like ag and industrial waste. Over here, folks, we've got, guess what? It's not the 906, it's the 907. And the 907 here with the new Stage 5 engine. Jazz, at the moment, the industry is reeling from red to white diesel changeover mm. and the global inflation in fuel prices overall. So this Stage 5 engine here and the efficiency, but not just the efficiency, the productivity you can get after each of that drop is so important, is it? Tell me about what you've done here to make it really cost effective for customers. Now, the old M-Series is already a very efficient uh, setup. So we pretty much baseline across that, across the board. But with the new engine, of course, you get a lot more torque so you can get more work done. And on the front end, we'll show you the pressure compensating valve, which in combination with this really allows you to get a lot of work done. Uh, all three models uh, benefit from a larger fuel tank, so even though it's an efficient setup, being able to work longer hours is exactly what the customers wanted. So, we listened to them. And we're talking about these machines being real workhorses, aren't we? And that's why the configuration and everything is so important. Come around here and let's have a look at this one, because one of the things that's really interesting about the, the machine range is these are the, some of the test units, folks. And it's about looking at how you can make changes for different markets, isn't it? For example, you know, we've got, hold on, we've got no cab in this one. There's, there's, there's some glass at the front, Jazz, but no cab here. But this isn't a typical machine that you'd find in the UK market. It's for other markets. Tell us why the, the no cab version as such. Exactly that. I mean, different markets want different things, OK? Uh, we got, uh, say, Af Africa, Middle East or southern part of the United States where they require simply a, a canopy machine. And it's being able to offer horses for courses. Yep. Uh, and this is one of the key differentiators for those markets. Yeah, we talked about there earlier about this machine being a utility machine. Mm. And actually, you've changed a bit with the metal at the front. <laughs> yeah. What does that actually mean in terms of what you can use on this machine now and, and why it's probably more of a workhorse than it potentially would have been before? So the loader arms, especially on the Nino, have been reprofiled to basically able to reach much more, uh, let's say, uh, specifically over certain obstacles. So that's the key one there. On the front end, you'll see here a pin on. So we didn't offer this sort of setup before. It still is an uh, uh, integrated work tool carrier, of course, so you can switch the tools out. But some operators, customers just want to keep a bucket on all day long. So keeping it simple, of course, means you get better payload on the front end. So we've introduced that as well. Now the 908, again here, what's really interesting, when you, you just see the, the heart of the thinking at Caterpillar mm. when you are coming around and seeing some of these test machines. Uh, and again, this is another one of those machines. It's about saying, what else can we configure? And this is literally like, almost like a Lego option right. to, for this 908. You can put different things in different places. And here, folks, you just see a simple attachment there because this is a really popular unit in the UK market for the plant hire sector. So mm. again, configurations and options that actually can reduce cost and also can actually be more specific. So what have we got in here and, and why can people now make those changes? Being able to slice and dice, especially the operator station, is a big part of this setup strategy of this machine. So here you, for example, plant tire, they just want a storage tray, they don't need the box and lockable and all that stuff. You can do that. But what's really uh, cool about this product and new to the uh, new next gen compact loaders, 
is our kidding strategy. So let's say you mm -hmm. started your plant tire business, you want to keep your costs low, you can yep. buy a base unit. You know what? Suddenly a lot of snow comes, ah, I didn't configure a snow machine. Not a problem. We've got 50 to 60 kits now available that allow you through the aftermarket system to update this the way you want. So if you want the new rotary sensors, or if you want a storage box, or if you want, uh, let's say, ride control even, you can now simply contact your local cat dealer and say what you need and spec up this machine versus having a base spec. So that's a really cool feature. They've been designed to be base spec and then updated afterwards. Come and have a look at the high reach version of the 908. Now the high reach version, we've all talked about already and Jazz is super excited about That's this, it. the valves. This time we've taken the front end panel off this so we can see these valves. Jazz, you know, we're underneath now and safely uh, underneath mm. the actual high reach. You know, this is really changing this model's capabilities for different markets. Those markets we talked about, yep. the sort of loading markets, the waste application markets, mm. that makes it more versatile machine option, doesn't it, for different people? Absolutely. A key characteristic of the CAT Compact Loader has always been its operating capacity. Yep. It, it can literally pick up a lot more than you think it can. Right. However, reach has always been a restriction for us. So now with the new 908 High Lift, this opens a vast array of new uh, applications for us, like you've talked about, industrial waste, agriculture, and those elements too. So this one here is a key one. In fact, the 908 High Lift has a higher B pin, or the articulation point there, than a 910. No way! Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> so it really does give you that extra reach if you need it. Where we've had so many customers like, yeah, the 908 is just a bit short, but the yeah, 910 is yeah. a bit too much. Yeah. This is a viable option for them now. The cat DNA is something we talk about throughout uh, big machine technology and uh, mindset coming down onto small platforms. Traditionally, compact wheel loaders have a very simple valve system. It's just a bucket and fork, bang, bang machine. But with a pressure compensating valve, what this allows it to do now is with the multifunctionality that customers require on the front end, uh, where you're operating with some sort of compromise when you're lifting and tilting and trying to send some flow to the tool, mm. you'd have to sort of modulate that yourself. No compromise anymore. We've literally taken it from the 920, our larger compact loader, dumped it into here. So now the multifunctionality for the operators in snow or even agriculture or working with any funky tool at the front, they can do so with, uh, with, with ease. And what's interesting about the funky tools that you talked about is the fact that the configuration of this setup now as well means that you can take the buckets and forks that people are used to, but you can also use some of your existing attachments mm. from your skid steer range. Yeah, so the, the ISO coupler, which has been, it's our staple, being it's a big one in Europe, but as a skid steer loader coupler option, that, that opens up a whole array of uh, attachments, as you mentioned. The machine also comes with a high flow as well, so you can have a Series 1 and Series 2 type cat attachment on the front end. So yeah, it really does allow you to do a lot more now with the, with the machine. And of course, pressure compensator valve, bigger fuel tank, skid steel loader option on the front. Well, you're good as gold to get some more work done. So we mentioned here that the, the, we're talking about the cab. The biggest change for me is very obvious. You're looking out of here. The visibility is there. There's no other bars and barriers to visibility anymore, is there? Visibility is, is paramount for operators, right? Keep them safe, being able to see the work site. Uh, and that was a key metric for us when we we're trying to create this new operator station. So that was not impaired. Of course, we've always had two doors. So that means you've got fully glazed from the top to bottom on both sides. Yeah. And the vi rear visibility is pretty good too. So as a 360 workstation, uh, it's pretty cool. So this can get pretty fast in here yeah. as well, can't it? So what's the top speed that this is now capable of doing? So we now do 40K uh, and 25 miles per hour, shift on the fly, so you don't need to stop the machine to change any gears, just like the larger loaders, just keep Oof. on going. Jazz, has been great to find out about the whole range, 906, 907, that one without a cab, and <laughs> the 908 uh, here with the cab and all the extra reach with the high lift configuration. Thanks very much for talking to us. Cheers. Appreciate it, mate.